Hello guys, welcome back to Unscripted X. Today I wanted us to take a crack at the mathematics knowledge portion of the ASVAB. Um, and without further ado, let's get right into it. Um, so the first question we have here is um, <clears throat> the square root of 2 to the 4th power is equal to what? So uh, one way we can treat this is 2 to the fourth power, and then we can treat the square root as uh, divided by two, right? Because the square root is typically one half. Um, any number to the one half power is the square root. So when we do it that way, this then becomes two to the two, and we all know that two to the second power is b. So that's the first one. The second one is simplify, and then we have the expression there. Um, typically, dividing <laughs> dividing a fraction by a fraction is something that you know uh, no mathematician finds, I guess, uh, pleasing in doing. Right? Uh, there's no pleasure in doing that. So what we typically do is just take the um, the reciprocal of the second fraction and then do a multiplication. And so this is what I mean. Uh, we can take the first one like this, divided by y, and then we can multiply it by, and then we flip the second fraction, right? So now we have x cubed divided by 3y to the second. Now when we do that, I will see that we get 9x to the fifth over 3y to the third. Um, and we can simplify this, the 9 and a 3, right? 3 goes into itself one time, 3 goes into 9 three times. So now we can go the x and the y cannot cancel each other out because they're two different variables. And so when we look here to see which one resembles the answer we've, uh, we worked out, b appears to be that. And then we can look at number three. It says the probability of rolling an even number on a set of two dice is, <clears throat> well, we know that on a, on a set of two dice, I mean, the probability will be for, for getting an even number um, a die has six sides, and so if we want an even number, we can get, we can get two, we can get four, we can get six. So, so that basically makes up about a half of the die. So, wherefore, without the two dies, I mean, we get half on any die that we use, and so this one should be um, a um, number four. It says in a circle O, the radius is six units long. Find the di the diagonal of square, and then we're given the square Q R S T. So find the diagonal. So you know, find uh, this this value here. And the way we do that is we know that the radius is six. If the radius is six, um, then we can say so. This is six this is six and we can say the same for this being six and this being six so really the size are 12 and so to find a diagonal we can just use Pythagorean theorem which is just like um, a squared plus b squared um, equals c squared and in this case the a we can say a squared is 12 plus uh, b squared, which is also 12, um, equals to c squared. And so really we know <clears throat> 12, uh, 12 squared is 144, right? Um, so we get 144 plus 144 equal to c squared. And to solve for c, we just have to take the, 
we just have to take the square root of this um, 144 times 2, we should say. So um, another way of writing the 144 plus 144 is this 144 times 2, right? And we can bring out the 144 um, because it's a perfect um, square, right? Well, I said perfect square. It, it has a number that when you square root, you get a number. So 12 squared um, is 144. So we can bring the 12 out and keep the two in the square root. So it'll be like this. And so that's that's our C. So it looks like C. <laughs> Ironically, the answer is also C. So um, number five, it says, if six less than twice a number is added to 10, the result is two. An equation that represents this is, so six less than two, um, twice a number, so twice a number is two times x, and then six less than, right? So we can subtract six less than that. Um, and then they said um, it's added to 10. So we can add 10 to this, and then they said is equal to two. So it looks like D resembles what that expression, uh, it resembles that expression. All right, we can keep going. Number six, it says, Round it to the nearest tens. Eight, 826 divided by 12 is, so 826 divided by 12. Um, we can do long division, um, and that's, I could do another video on how to do long division, but when you do the, um, when you do the long division, um, I guess, um, do this. You should get 86, uh, 68.83. Um, and so round it to the nearest tenths. This being a tenths, um, we see that three, because this is three, we'll just keep the eight where it is. And so this, the answer should be 68.8. So, that's it. And then for number seven, it says if x is equal to negative one, then uh, negative two x. So we could just do this negative two x times negative one squared minus three or negative one plus four. So we do all this, we see that the, the negative one squared is gonna be positive one, positive one times negative one, I mean times negative two will be negative two, so negative two, and then we come to <clears throat> negative three times negative one, that'll be a plus three, and so now we have a negative two plus um, three plus four. And so this becomes uh, the negative two plus positive 3 becomes 1, and then 1 plus 4 is just be 5. So C would be our answer. And then this one, uh, number 8 is saying, 8 is what percent of 60? Well, these ones are typically easy because you can say that 10% of 60 is 6, right? And so if 10% if of 60 is 6, then we can also say that three would be like five, five percent of sixty, right? And so um, we can add this three to the six, and that'd give us nine. So this this is five percent, and this is ten percent, and so five plus ten would be fifteen, and so this should be about fifteen percent. So that's typically the the easy way I go about doing these percentage problems. Number nine says if a rectangle has a length of 18 inches and a width of six inches, what is the perimeter of the rectangle in in feet, right? So if you draw this out, we'll have 18 and we will have six. So if you carry that out, if you carry that through, you get this. And this all is added together, you should get about 48 but they, they want the answer in feet, right? We know 
12 inches gives us one one feet or one foot um, so because we have 48 we can just divide this by 12 to see how many feet we're gonna get and this divided by 12 gives us 4 so we get 4 feet so the answer should be a um, number 10 let's solve, solve for B and then we have that expression there so um, what we could do because we're solving for B we'd want to have the same denominator if we want to add uh, those stuff so uh, we can go ahead with this all this is equal to 1 to have the same to to have the same denominator we just cross multiply so this will give us 3 B over 15 plus 5 B over 15 so by cross multiplying that's what I meant I mean like this times that times that and then likewise this will be times that and times that so that's hence we get what 3b over 15 and um, 5b over 15 again so now we have the same denominator so we can add and when we do so we get 8 8b over 15 is equal to 1 and then we can get rid of this 15. If we're solving for B, we can get rid of this 15 by just multiplying this, uh, this left side by 15 and doing the same um, on the right side as well. And so we'll get 8B is equal to 15. And then to solve for B, we can just divide both sides by, um, by 8. And we get eight, uh, B by itself. And so now we get 15 over 8 um, as our answer. So it looks like D would be the answer for this one. Um, 11 says, in, the, in triangle ABC, if the measure of A is half the measure of B, what is the measure of C? Well, we have these congruent lines here. So we know that this angle uh, should be equal to this angle. And then these two should be half of what whatever this is. Um, so we can try values. We're typically, like if we pick 60, assume, let's assume that we pick 60 um, for this. We pick another 60. Keeping in mind that the interior angle of a triangle should be 180, right? So if this should be twice, then we get like 120. So when we add all this up, we get about 240, right? Because 120, this, the 12, I mean, the 60s added to themselves would also be 120. So 120 times 2, we get 240. Well, we know this can't be right because the interior angle of a triangle should be 180 and shouldn't, shouldn't be more than 180, right? So it should be a 180. So uh, this cannot be true. And so... Um, we can then, because this is big, the 60 was big, that means we need to come down a bit. So uh, we can pick 45 now to try it. So 45, 45 here as well. And tw twice 45 would be 90. All right. And we add all this up. This will basically be what? Uh, 90 plus 90, which should be 180. All right. Because... The 45 plus this other 45, that's 90. And then this 90 here plus the 90 that we uh, we got from adding the two 45s gives us 180. So the answer should be uh, B um, in this case. So let's go back to color green. And then lastly, it says simplify 2 times the square root of 18 minus 3 times the square root of 8. Typically, when I, whenever I got something like this, I just try to get it all in in common terms, right? So I would typically take the 2 back inside of the square root, and when we do so, we get 4 times um, 18. 
4 times 18 should give us about 72. Yep, so now we got 72 down here. So it'll be the square root of 72 minus, and then we do the same for uh, the other one. So this one, it'll be, we take 3 back inside of the square root, that becomes a 9. <clears throat> 9 times 8. Should also give us should also give us seventy two. So now this is what we have. So it's essentially the square root of seventy two minus the square root of seventy two, which, when we carry through, should give us zero. And so the answer should be D. So yeah, this is twelve problems. Um, now we could check the answers to see how we did. And um, so let's go back, starting from number one, we get number one was B, which is what we got. Number two is B again, that's what we got. Number three is A, which is what we got. Number four is, number four is C, which is what we got. Number five is D, and then number six is A, number seven is C, number eight is B, number nine is A, Number 10 is D, number 11 is B, and number 12 is D. So it looks like we got everything correct. If you do, if you enjoyed um, this mathematics knowledge portion, um, do make sure to check out my other videos. If you enjoyed it, leave a comment down there. Let me know if you need me to make more videos like these. Um, if you, for instance, make uh, want me to go through uh, how to do long divisions or if you have any other topics that you would need me to go over, um, break down for you so that um, you can be, uh, you can get the better help or um, help to go take the exam, you let me know and I'll, um, I'll try to make the videos for you guys. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, peace.